Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to talk about how we do fire alarm battery calculation. If you haven't watched my other videos yet, I'll give you a recap or you can also check the description below. Don't forget to like and share this video to your friends or workmates. Leave a comment below and subscribe to my channel to know more things we do in the fire protection industry. See you! Okay guys, let us start with the discussion. Um, we have seven um, main procedures on how we calculate the battery calculation. The first one is to calculate the total standby current. So what are those devices that we need to consider in, in the calculation of the total standby current? The first one is to know the current of the controller. The second one is to calculate the standby current of all initiating devices like the smoke detector or heat or whatever type of fire detectors that we have in our design. And the third one is to calculate the current of our auxiliary output. So, what are those um, equipment that we can consider as auxiliary output? Let's say we have a digital alarm communicator transmitter, which is giving the signals from power alarm control panel or transmitting power alarm signals from the building to civil depends of our station. This uh, equipment needs 24 BDC power, right? So this is one sample of auxiliary output current. Once we know the total uh, standby current for those three devices that we mentioned before, we can now proceed in the next procedure, which is to calculate the total alarm current. <clears throat> what are the devices that um, we need to consider in calculating the total alarm current. Same what on what we have in total standby current, we need to consider also the alarm current for controller. And the second one is to uh, determine the total number or total alarm current of our initiating devices, like the smoke detector, heat detector, etc. And the third one is, again, the auxiliary output. So we're also determining the alarm current for auxiliary output. The fourth one is to determine the total alarm current of our notification appliance. What are those notification appliances again? Let's say we have a horn strobe or we have a horn so bell. So those are the notification appliance. And the last one is if we have a releasing output. So this releasing output, uh, when do we have this uh, type of device? Let's say the application of fire alarm is for activation of power suppression. Then if we have that kind of system, then that is the time that uh, we have also a releasing output current. Okay, so let's do the... Um, example worksheet for battery calculation. So this is based on the procedures that we discussed earlier. So the first step is to calculate the total standby current. So let's say we have a one fire alarm control panel. 
first item is to know the current of controller standby current so let's check based on the available data based on the available data of manufacturer this is the sample um, there is a power consumption of 0.135 amperes at 24 volts DC for the controller so we will just fill that up that table so we have one controller let's say one controller and how much is the standby current 0 0.135 amperes so for the initiating devices guys this depends on um, the requirements of manufacturer sometimes um, the current required for initiating devices are already um, included in the controller current let's say like in this example in this manufacturer if we will check the notes it was mentioned here that the 0 0.135 amperes current already includes the power to activate trouble relays and power for the maximum number of two wire detectors so it means this 0 0.135 amperes already includes the power to the detectors or our initiating devices so what will happen now even if we have 20 quantity here so this standby current will be zero because it's already included in the calculation of 0 0.135 ampere or we can also just leave it blank because it's already included in the standby current of controller now we can proceed on uh, determining the standby current for auxiliary so for auxiliary our example is the digital alarm communicator so let's check the data sheet of digital alarm communicator how much standby current that we have this is the sample of digital alarm communicator that I chose so based on the data sheet the standby current for the digital alarm communicator is 150 milliamperes so let's write this one number of 150 milliamperes or point or 0 0.15 ampere okay so based on this we can calculate the total standby current so how much do we have 0.135 plus 0.150 is equals to 0 0.285 amperes once that we have the total standby current guys now we can now multiply it to the required hours for standby current which is 24 hours again this is based on the requirements of NAPA 72 guys but it varies sometimes the requirements of project spec specification is different so it depends but um, for the minimum requirement as per NPA, it's 24 hours. So 24 times the total standby current will give us how much? 24 times 0.285 equals to 6.84. So we have a value of 6.84 amperes ampere r this will be ampere r okay so we can now proceed on the next procedure which is to calculate the total alarm current so we have one panel what is the alarm current for controller uh, based on the datasheet of manufacturer guys is the same with 
the alarms uh, I mean the same with the standby current which is 0 0.135 so we will just write it here initiating the bias like what I said it's already um, included in the alarm current of the controller auxiliary output let's check um, the digital alarm communicator which is our sample for auxiliary device we have 190 milliamperes so let's write it down 190 one digital alarm communicators um, 190 milliamperes which is 0 0.19 notification appliance let's say we have 10 numbers of notification appliance so let's see how much um, alarm current that we have now for notification notification appliance Let's say um, we have a sample of model series AS from Willac. This is just a sample, guys. So, in choosing the um, alarm current for this horn so you have to be careful that you highlighted the correct model that you use in your design. Let's say, for example, in this sample, we considered AS 24 MCWH, which is a wall mounted AS series type of horn strobe. So, how much is the current considering the high dB, the highest sound pressure level that it can produce? Based on this, considering the highest light intensity which is 185 candela the alarm current is 0 0.320 so we'll use this 0 0.320 okay multiply it by 10 how much so it will be 3.2 and for the output device we will consider the releasing module let's say we consider the fire alarm used for power suppression system what is the alarm current Alarm current is 37 milliampere. And let's say, for example, aside from releasing module, we have also a relay module. What, how much is the alarm current for a relay module? So in this relay module, there is four number of relays. So per each relay, as per the data sheet, once it is activated, it's consuming a current of 0 0.010 ampere. Let's say these four relays are activated during fire. It's just a sample. So how much will we have? 37 milliamperes plus the relay module, which is 0 0.04. Four numbers, eh? So, 0 0.04 from the relay module plus our releasing module, which is 37 milliamperes or 0 0.037 plus 0 0.037. This will give us 0 0.077. Amperes. That is, let's say, two numbers. Okay? So, from this sample, now we can proceed with the total alarm current. So, let's calculate. 0 0.135 plus 0 0.190 plus 3.2 plus 0.07 is equals to 3.6. This will be our total alarm current. Once we calculated this, and we can now multiply this one by the number of hours required by NAP702 in alarm operation. 
So it's 5 minutes or 0.833. So multiply it for 0.833. This will give us a value of 3 ampere hours. Okay. So once we calculated this, we can now proceed with the third procedure. Okay, so how much is our total standby alarm current again? 6.84. So let's just let's just fill this up. 6.84. Then 3 ampere. 3 ampere. Now we can calculate for the total um, battery capacity, which is 6.84. Plus 3. That will give us 9.84. Once we determine the battery capacity, we can now um, multiply it by a safety factor of 20%. So multiply this one by 1.2. That will give us 11.8. That will give us 11.81. How much is the total alarm current again? 9.84. So, once you determine the total current, guys, make sure that you select either a same value with this calculated battery capacity or more than. So, in this case, I can propose, let's say, 12 ampere hour, which is available in the market. That's it, guys. That's how we calculate the battery capacity. Hope that you learned something from me, guys. Again, don't forget to like and share this video to your friends or workmates. Leave a comment below and subscribe to my channel to know more things we do in fire protection industry. Bye, guys.